All right, what are we working on now? We're working on a Harley Davidson green horn. You think it's a repop? Nope, it's not a repop. It's not a repop. Have you seen those on eBay? What are they worth? This one? Yes. Probably about two and a half, three bucks. No way. Yep. So I did get some few good pieces. These bolts aren't, these screws are not correct. No. Somehow I knew that. You knew that? Yeah. You sure? But I thought I'd save them anyways. I'm assuming your bracketry is not too good because it's all bent to hell. Well. This is supposed to be flat and straight. Not okay. Bent or folded around the horn like it is. Okay. And these are heat treated so they don't bend that easy. How do you think they bent that so badly? They probably put a big boom against it. Yeah. You got a big dent right in here on this. Yeah. This side's not too bad, so you have to fix that a little bit. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is find out what the hell they got going on here. They got this stupid screw jammed in here, a bolt, for some reason. Give me two jumpers behind you. One on the right. The first thing I'm going to do is find out if this thing even works. Oh, my knees are barking. You got barking spiders for knees? No. <laughs> barking knees. I was under the impression that that's a, the adjustment. And we're going to use a 6 volt battery to check this. I think it works. Okay. That's a good thing. I think it's out of adjustment. Okay. You know, maybe you're not supposed to be on 12 volts. Oh. You're buzzing too hard, huh? Appears to have made noise. That means it probably would work. This is not correct here, though. They had a they had a set, little small short screw with a nut on it. Oh. Because this just keeps moving. Okay. So first thing I do is get this cover off, which is held on with three screws, and you got six screws back here. So you only need to take out three of them. Okay. And you notice they got a hole right here for that to go yeah. through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You notice how this doesn't fit in there. All right. Okay, so the, this, this, and this one up here have to come off. Now these are stove bolts. See what that means, don't you? Yes, they've got a shoulder on the other end. These are square headed. Right. The aftermarket ones are just a round screw. Can okay. you see the shoulder right there? Ah, well, that's original then. It's a stove bolt. Okay. So these are original. Let's see, to keep you from mixing them up, we'll go ahead and put the nuts back on them. Okay. You probably can't tell the difference between them and that piece of crap screws you got. Oh, there. I knew those were junk. See, that's amazing. I'm guessing a lot of this stuff was original or wherever this thing was sitting. Now, this is a 42 horn. Which okay. is correct. You know why I know it's 42? How do you know? Got two small holes and two big holes. Oh. Hmm. So there's supposed to be a uh, wave lock up here. There's a spring that allows a horn to vibrate. Right. Without breaking the bracket off. Okay, this here doesn't really want to fit in here. I think I found a way of straightening it though. I think so. In there. You like that? I do. Yeah. You said that wouldn't fit. I'm thinking that you got too much paint in there. Somebody does, yeah. Now, Boy, your we... bike, this might take a cover on it. Now, the WLA, they have a they have a bullseye style cover. Oh. So this is your earlier 30 style cover. Now this is bent, so it needs to be straightened. So you need special tools for doing that. Ah, there. <laughs> I imagine that thing's brass, huh? Yep. Looks good. Once you get the paint off, you'll be able to see it. it's still pushed in right now. Right yeah. <clears throat> you need to take a, a light little mallet and hit it against something softer than this. Okay. And just lightly tap this out evenly. But you don't want to be hard enough that you're going to collapse this. So it has to be in something really soft. Right. You know, a real piece of, you know, real soft foam rubber. Right, right. You want something that's going to spread the load so it won't just knock 
that down. We want to knock a whole surface right. down to get it smoothed out. Mm -hmm. So your job is going to be to find something that's like I can that. do that. And see, this is better right here, too, so I just pissed them down with my finger. Those are pretty thin. Actually, you're pretty critical. It looks pretty straight. That's because it's dark and you can't see it. When you run your hand across, you can feel them now. Okay. It's supposed to be a nice dome shape everywhere. Right. And it's original because it has square holes. The aftermarket ones they make, they have round holes. I'll be darn. Huh. Plus, the other way you tell is the angles of these here are less on the repop. I'll be darned. So you, can, you can spot an original one, but the repops are pretty nice looking. The older repop ones, the new ones are junk, but the ones we were making 20, 30 years ago that Dixie still sells on eBay. <laughs> so you better buy them horns up while you can because those have the good covers on them. Okay. The only, they look just like these except they have the round hole which you can slot out to square. And uh, see, you're not going to notice this little angle thing right here. I'll no. notice it, but... Yeah, well, you've got an eye. All right. Unless I told you of that, you wouldn't I wouldn't have known. And they of course, you're pretty nice. Well, like I said, for the military bikes, the uh, WLA bikes, they're supposed to have a round bullseye style. Okay. So, anyway, this here is... This is not too valuable. It's only probably, you know... Yeah. $125 for one of them. Huh. $150, something like that. <laughs> they're not too valuable. Okay, I'm going to straighten this a little bit here, too. There. Yeah, much better. Try to do that. There. Now you're taking it apart. Why? Just to clean it up? Because it needs to be worked on. Okay. You need to make it work correctly. You need to get some fresh paint on here. We're going to have to get this strap straightened out. Everything just needs to be cleaned up and rebuilt like it's supposed to be. These are actually supposed to be cat, uh, cat plated, the center part. They're not supposed to be painted. Right. That's why I know somebody painted the damn horn because it didn't come stock that way. They're a real crappy looking cat, almost like zinc, but dull. Almost like a galvanized almost. But not to quite, resist but not moisture. That, but not quite that. Gray. Maybe later in the war they might have just painted them because it was cheaper than using the, the other materials that they needed for other things. You know, whatever that galvanizing and CAD is, they might have needed it for something important like headlights or something. Yes, we're all metal under here. Yeah. That's what that was supposed to be. See that rust? Just raw metal. Hmm. So this needs to be all taken apart, cleaned up, and then put a light paint on it, probably like a silver paint on it to make it look kind of like it's supposed to be. Okay. I'd have to pull out one of my original horns to see exactly what colors they're using in later productions, but we'll see. See, we got some little bit of corrosion going on in here. Let's see, this is not corroded. The magnets are all good. The yeah. ports all look really, really nice. So we need to get this corrosion here to stop, right here, and pretty much uncorrode it. I'm thinking we probably can use some of that rust doctor shit, and that should take the. It might take off some of the paint, but it'll get rid of all this rust. Right. Without damaging anything else. Right, right. If I just went in and blasted this thing. Yeah, it would destroy it. You tend to take this. Uh, protection off all your wiring, blow all this insulator yeah. stuff off, it just won't be very good. Okay. The rust doctor will take off old paint, because it's new paint, it doesn't hurt, but old paint, it takes it right off. Huh, okay. So, anyway, we try that on this one, see what it looks like. The outside, I blast it. So, get all that off. Obviously, the bracket's bent like a pretzel, so Yeah. We're going to have to figure out how we're going to do that. I'm not sure how we're going to get that flattened out, but we'll have to work on that a little bit. So. So anyway, that's what that needs to be done on that. This here, obviously, we just blast it and then paint it. Looks like it's relatively straight. This is still good here. This piece actually unscrews off of this. <clears throat> so we can clean up this whole thing or just blast it again and then paint it. So whatever you want to do on that, you can make your decisions okay. on that. So at least we know what it looks like on the inside. It looks really yeah, nice. Yeah, looks good. But like I said, this piece here is not correct. At least they're not supposed to be that long. At least not that I've ever seen before. Somehow to me it looks stock. It's just a screw. 
the, set, the original was a set screw with a lock nut. This is just to get a slot in with a hole, but see it's not adjustable. See it goes up and adjusts to the point right here. See right here, see how it lifts the point yeah. right here? Yeah. So that's that's all the longer it's supposed to be. If it was this long here, you'd break the damn thing off. It would, right. it would never be that long. So you're only supposed to be like maybe this tall. All right, well we can find a set screw in the nut. Yeah, well that's, that's stuff we need to do. And obviously this nut's not correct. These have insulators in here, so we have to, we'll just blast this stuff, see what it looks like. Come up with the correct hardware on this stuff here. And just pretty much, uh, you know, make it look like new again. Be the same size as this one. Yep. See it's spinning on the inside. Can't stop it from spinning. So we're gonna have to get the little channel off on that. Set of these. The more it spins, the more it chews up the insulator. Right. Shake it in there with this. Have to do some different tools in this stuff. Oh, I did get it loose. Did come off. Good deal. Tighten this one back up. See, it just keeps spinning on the inside of here. Yeah. Uh, the wire's broke now. Yep. It looks like it wasn't welded very good to begin no. with. That's actually a plus because that's so nasty looking. Can you hold that? Yeah, there you go. We're going to have to obviously make sure this isn't uh, shorting through. Nope. All right, well, we'll have to play with that a little bit later. All right. That's obviously going to have to be fixed. We need to get this one out and then Make sure all the insulators are good and replace them if we need to be. So we might look in the other one here too. Make sure this is welded up. This one's obviously been re-welded because it's yeah. too crappy looking. Well, and it was cruddy to begin with. Yeah, so we'll work on that a little bit. All right, so anyway, let's throw right on that one. So we'll just throw it on the floor and jump on it a couple times. Make yeah. Sure it's no good. Okay. Okay, this here needs to be cleaned up, get all the uh, grease off it, and then either we squirt over that pan or just get it down to the bare metal and clean it all up. All right. This is wrong. This here needs to be cleaned up and probably shoot some paint on it. This nut here, probably original. So I don't recall having one without the titties on it, but it looks like a good part that's probably original on everything else. So, But it needs to be cleaned up and painted. That'll make this all look like new. Okay. Obviously, we already uh, got that all fixed up. So we'll get this one cleaned up, and once again, squirt some new paint on it. Yep. Now you get a little bit of wear right up in here, but I wouldn't worry about no, that. No, that's nothing. But once we get it cleaned up, if we don't like it, I can put a little weld right there. Okay, I, it looks great. I think it's probably fine the way it is. Yeah. That'll get that cleaned up. The axle, same thing, clean all up. Obviously, it's broken right here. Mm -hmm. So I need to straighten this out, see how it's all bent. Yeah, it hit something. Get that straightened up and then re-weld it on here. <laughs> I don't know if this is original being like this. But they said the, the a Canadian bike. It's bright. a lot of work to make a bent, yeah. bent one like that, so it's probably is some kind of original or something. All right. Canadian stuff's weird, so it's just different. Hey. Hey, right. All okay, right. Okay, what else we got over there in the uh, bucket of shit? Nothing. We got a generator over there. Hand that thing up. Okay. This obviously looks like a brand new piece. 
screw is always missing here. Yeah. Phillips said I don't think that was right. All right. To get a punch. Oh, someone already knocked the pin out, so there's no pin on it. So nothing was holding that in there. I've never seen anybody have a slot in the end of it like that. I think somebody uh, made that. Yeah, this thing's pretty, pretty good. Where'd you get this? Out of my bike. <laughs> Came with the bike. Yes. And I don't know whether it was generating or not. Yeah, it's definitely. Uh, a dinosaur. Definitely a first class piece of equipment there. All right. It looks some good under the, and we'll be back. Looks good under the cover, the rear cover. All right. Yep. All right, here's some tools. Ah. It appears to be a Harley. Can't read the tag. <clears throat> Got a bunch of paint on it. Hardly made their own generators? Yeah. Something was rubbing against it here to beat the hell out of it too. It's a 32E, there's what I was looking for. Which is what it's supposed to be. <clears throat> A lot of layers of fucking crap on here. See, tag has silver highlights on a black base. Right. But they, just like everything on the whole bike, they painted it. See, there's the 2 and the E. There's a 32 suit. Yeah. Anyway, they reproduce the tags. I might have some. If you really care about it being really super clean, but probably just knock it off like this and then. Uh, yeah, tape it up before you paint it. Put some tape over it and leave it just the way it is. Just get this stupid paint off of it. People just paint every damn thing instead of doing what they're supposed to do. Anyway, you can see how it looks a little better. Mm -hmm. It's 100% better just doing that. But... <clears throat> All right, so. All right, what do you got over here? Phillips. Yeah, and then there was only one. You didn't have Phillips screws on there, is. I didn't think so. What's that? That's a nut. Pull that nut out of there. That goes in here. Right? That goes in there. Okay, give me uh, that put that box over there. Box can go right there. It's original. See, these were dipped. Right. So yeah. This is what the dip was. It's right. Hooked the holes in it. Goes in. Yeah. And, so, and stuff and comes back up. It's got a big flat spot in here. You can probably uh, body work this out a little bit, clean it up, repaint it. It was black originally. Make it look pretty again. So I'm guessing this is probably stripped. That's why the screw wasn't there. No, the. Oh, yeah. Okay. Make sure you the bag everything so you know where it goes. Okay. Here's my bag. It's called, yeah, I, it's called a box. Yeah, I see. Jesus. Hey, the nuts tight. There's a wire attached. Brushes work. Now, the fun part is figuring out where all these wires go. So, you want to make sure you keep track of them. So where's it go?
pretty self-explanatory. No, it gets pretty complicated. All right, well then. They, they interrupt them behind themselves. So. Gotcha. Okay, we're going to try to get this thing off of here. It's just a puller. It's a bridge puller. See what they call the bridge puller. Okay, i got to get something that's going to push on the inside out without destroying it. So I'm thinking uh, maybe something like, like that right there. You didn't know these were puller. Well, you know, the correct tool for the correct job. The other fellow was talking about that. What was it? If you need to get it, you need to get it. Yep. Seal driver. I mean, really? If you put it on top of those two screws, it just quits rolling around. I can just use a regular standard two gel puller on this too. You hold it, I'll try to. The problem is the damn thing won't slide. This one's nice and smooth, it's supposed to be. This one here. Something is got it bound up. Probably because it's all gummed up. All slimed up and sitting. See, when your tools don't want to help you, they don't help. It's only going to go until the socket bottoms out. Which is about right there. So it appears the armature has had the whole end of it broken off. Look what you did to my socket. What did it do? Take oil on it. Oh, that's not the worst thing that ever happened. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't the worst, huh? So do you think the, the armature's been broken off? Yes. Where, where do you see that? The end of it's gone. And they slotted it? No. It's broken off or cut off. Oh. Huh? It's a roll pin that holds us in. Oh. Roll, there's a dowel pin on the modern these a roll pin when you wear the crap. It has a dowel pin that goes in. It's a tapered dowel pin. So it's been... And this gear is really worn out, too. It's on a spline, though. See how worn out the teeth yeah. are? Yeah. So this, this gear is pretty wasted. Your eyelid gear and your motors probably looks the same. <clears throat> it should be replaced, but, you know, whatever. This is just a slinger. That's broken off from somebody beating on it, I imagine. Okay, now see how you got these four rivets right here? Uh-huh. That denotes that it was made before 44. Okay. So this is definitely a military generator or 30s generator. Because they have a big felt seal that goes in there, held in with a retainer, it's riveted all together. Later on they put a seal in there and the seal has a 44 or 45 number on it. So that's... But this here is not a screwdriver slot, this is actually in the armature's missing and that's your dowel pin slot. Or your dowel pin pole. So this thing is, should be like you know, about this long. So what do you do in a case like that? Uh, that armature's bad. Okay, so it wasn't. It wasn't. There's was actually nothing holding that gear on there except crud. So that could come off at any time and I'm gonna surprise. All right. Well, so that was a. Can you can an armature be had? Uh, maybe. Okay. Now these wires we have to figure out where they all go to, and you remember where they go. 
So you keeping track of where these go? Well, I'm watching with you. You better be paying attention. Okay, where's my screwdriver at? See how they interrupt each other here? Yeah. Around here. That's your eyeballs. That camera has to see this. All right. So you got to pay attention when this goes. Okay, the wire that goes to the third brush, see how it goes down behind here? It goes way down in there. Okay. So we have to keep track of where all these go. This here brush wraps around here. See, so it comes out here and goes down to this side. See, it goes down in here. Okay. So I'll put your light in there, look down in there, see where it goes to. So which side of the field coils are going to, the inner one or the outer one? The two wires come out like this. Uh, I imagine the inner, I'm guessing. Well, there's two different ones. There's one down lower, one up high. Oh, it's hard to tell. Well, you've got to figure that out. Because this comes apart, we got to know all this. See the brush comes out? Mm -hmm. See that little clip that holds, holds it down? Sure. A slot right here. Yeah. So it goes in a slot, and you push it down. Make sure the spring is all the way in there like it's supposed to be, and that's the screw that holds it down. Okay, you don't want to... That's okay. how that goes. And this is all full, full of grease. See how it's worn sideways? Yeah. It's not supposed to be wearing sideways, so I don't know why it's doing that. Something might be bent in there. Because the armature's junk. No, that that could be something different. That's a whole other scenario running with that. So, then we take so this you're guessing out. this thing wasn't operating? No, it's still rubbing. It might have been operating. I don't know. Pretty simple device as long as the field coils are not uh, damaged and the armature is good. It would put out power. It's not that complicated. See, this brush is all worn at an angle too. Mm -hmm. See, it looks like it's worn like that. Instead of being here straight, it's just rocked away, rolled way up for some reason. I don't know why this has so much clearance in it. I don't know if it's brush ain't right or it's just that's how they made it. I'm not sure. This one has the same thing. You just slide it up. Yeah. And the clip will pop out. out. Roll it out of that little clip there. Come on. There it goes. Now this has been worked on. See a big wad of solder in there? Yeah. That ain't stock. These have been repaired. Probably broke or burned up. The brush was obviously like new, so they fixed it. <laughs> so that's been fixed. This is your third brush. This is supposed to be uh, perpendicular to this, so if it's bent up a little bit, you bend them. The whole thing looks like it's kind of trapezoidal. Yeah, that's what over. I was going to say. So my guess is it's probably been tweaked a little bit, so it, that's probably the brushes are wearing kind of funny. Okay. Got one more brush over here, and then you got to ground. There's two big brushes, which are your main generator, and then the little small one there is your third brush, which is for when the headlights come on. Give you a couple more amps of power. It's kind of like an on-demand generator. Oh, I see. It progressively puts out more power as needed. See that one's wearing a lot more flatter. It's kind of slimy coming out, so it's got a bunch of muck in there. Are those available? Yeah, they're available. These look like they're all right. They just clean them up a little bit and go from there. Okay, now this one here that goes to the brush, see how it wraps around the other side? Mm -hmm. so, 
but it's not behind the bolt yet, it's on this side of the bolt. This one here goes off to the right side. So that would be the ground. That's how you tell the ground wire from the other one. We will definitely be playing the general the video back to see how this is done. Ah. That's why I told you film it. Because I'm not gonna remember. And I know how bad the book is from 30 years ago when I used to get these. I probably haven't done one of these generators in 20-something years, maybe 30 years now, so. <laughs> Not real popular. All right, so that's disconnected. Got a big nut here on the end of this. We've got to take the nut off and pull this piece off. Is there anything like that remade, repot? I don't know what they make. I haven't been paying attention. They make armatures. I don't know about anything else besides that. I know we need to get that off. How tight do you think it is? I imagine not, Gary. You're not going to goof up the armature. I'm not going to hurt it? No, I don't think so. It's broken off on that other end. Right. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put this in the vise and do this. Otherwise, I gotta use my zip gun. <clears throat> One of these two will do it. It's a soft jaw, so it ain't gonna hurt anything. I don't have enough holding power, though. Not enough holding power. Nope. Pressure on it. There it goes. You know, so we don't keep anything in the way around here. Oh, that's okay. Okay. One nut. One lock. You know, you gotta pull this cover off because the bearing there, ball bearing in there, holds it together. Okay. So, we'll try this puller. I don't know if this will grab on enough to do it. I'm gonna have to get a different one. So, Harley had a part of the factory where they made their own electrical stuff. I don't know how much they actually made in house and how much they purchased from Delco. Most of the stuff you had Delco really made all these parts, would be my guess. Okay, see how that came off relatively easily. Mm -hmm. Okay, it says uh, this is shield the gasket and the bearings under it. So when you gotta put these back together, you gotta put gaskets all in here. See how this gasket's broken? Right. A little crispy anyway. Moisture. You can see how this was cad plated at one time? Mm-hmm. So the gasket's missing, so somebody was in here because a third of it was gone. So I don't know this. This is just been kind of a dust shield, keeps the crap out of it. Mm-hmm. Usually I put uh, sealed bearings in here. Otherwise, you got to go in there and lubricate these things every now and then. Right. What kind of lubrication would they put on there? Just oil? Machine oil, I imagine. Yeah. They're nice and smooth. Yeah. It? Kind of dry. So, anyway, you knock these out. There's a round snap ring that keeps them coming out this way. Should just go right out the other side, though. Official bearing holder here. It's called me. So, that looks like a shim washer, but my guess is it was probably a shielded, shielded bearing possibly. No, that's not. That is a separate washer. The shield would not be this big. It'd be smaller. So this was some kind of a washer. I don't recall those being in there before, but anyway, we need to get a new bearing. Appears to be a 3201 bearing. Can I get that at command? 
Probably. Or you just go over the shelf and then grab oh. one. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Either way. No. <laughs> I buy in house. I shop local. You shop local? Yeah. Now you see how the armature's all chewed up like there's a bunch of sand yeah. in there? Yeah. Well, of course. So I'm not sure what got in there to do all that. The smell is a smell burnt. Yeah, it doesn't smell good. If it smells burnt, that means it's burnt. Well, it smells other than normal. So chances are it might not be the best. There's another washer fill out. There's one of the shim washers for in here. You set the end play with shims. It sets where the armature sits because you don't want to drag it on there. Right, on the right. Shoulder. So that's what these washers do. They shim out the stuff. They make these in different thicknesses. Everything's over engineered on this stuff. Okay, and you got two big long screws that go all the way through that pull into this aluminum. Gotcha. Hanging. Those are right here. So we're going to have a small little screwdriver bit that's going to probably break. This is a nice new one. I'm guessing it'll come off because it's good and oily. Not good and rusty on the inside. Though. Yeah, it's good and oily. These are taper headed too. Ha! Ah. These are always missing or screwed up. They have reproduced them several times over the years, but this one here, the thread's kind of been screwed up on it a little bit. See, bits come in handy. Yeah, they sure do. Yeah. Did we jack it? Not yet. Still straight, and twisted. Easy to twist a little bit. Nice long screw. See, it's a tapered head. Oh yeah. It's obviously a tapered body on this side. Very easy to screw up, as you can tell. There's the other one. Looks good. Not broken. Not bent. Not screwed up. Good. Okay, now this here should be able to pop off now. Now, if you use this to knock it off, you might damage it. Okay. If you use this, it might be less, less aggressive to it. You know, it's like hitting a hard spot where it's right, got some right. strength. Okay, now this just has a dowel pin right here that holds it and aligns it. I indexes it, okay. Correct, indexes it. Okay, now we gotta look at our wires here. So you get to figure out where these come from. Okay, this wire here appears to be broken. <laughs> that means it probably was not working. And see that came out of here. Yeah. So this one on this side came out over here. So over here. The one that came out this side went over to the ground. So this is our ground. The one next to the label. First okay. one's ground. The inner one down low goes up to our brush right next to the ground. So that's the brush next to your terminals. Okay, the other one over here, this one here, the one on the my right side, where did it wind up going to? That was the one that went to the third brush. So that's the third brush. And this one over here is broken off, went to the actual brush on the on the thing there. So you got that all figured out? See it all interlaps and wraps around in there? Right. Boy, that thing is ugly. So all of this has to be put back the same way or it won't work. So look, so this one here obviously had some issues with it. Looks like it was a repaired soldered before. Possibly. 
It looks like it's soldered dirty. It's hard to tell, but I think it's soldered. And obviously, they must have broke it right out of the end of the fuel coil. So, obviously, your fuel coils are bad. Your armature is bad, maybe. It does have a burnt smell to it. Not real heavy, but a little bit. So here again, do they reproduce one of those? One of what? A whole a gener generator? You don't want to get a reproduction generator. You just oh. want reproduction parts to fix it. Oh, okay. This part's still good. Now there's a bunch of insulators in here. You have to clean all this stuff up. See the insulator? Put your papers in there? Yeah. They have a rebuild kit to give you all these new insulator pads. Okay. And replace all this stuff. Boy. Clean all up like you're supposed to. And this is supposed to be natural aluminum, not painted. So this just needs to be all cleaned up. And it's a good piece. It's not corroded. Doesn't look like anybody's beating on it with a big hammer. All right. So this is in good condition still. Now you want to get some piece of crap Taiwan import China piece, go for it. Or you can just put a two brush generator in there and make it like a new bike. Eliminate your third brush all the way. Cycle electric makes a real nice generator. So if you want to replace this with a two brush cycle electric generator, we can do that. What something like that go for? What do they go for? Just under five hundred. I was gonna say five bills. Well, you're gonna have five hundred bucks replaced rebuilding this one. They have an armature on the end of it out here. I mean, a regulator on the end of it, so it eliminates all your cutout and stuff. But. Um, and they're they're uh, they're very reliable. They work very well. Uh, I'm not sure on a 45 how it's going to work on a clutch on the clearances for the rocker clutch and stuff. So we'd have to mock that up and see. I have one on the shelf over there. I just found one here yesterday. Okay. With buried behind a bunch of other crap on the shelf. Just another $500 part on the shelf that I forget about. But uh, you know, if it's going to be a rider bike, these things at best put out like six amps. In the real world, that's enough because the bikes don't really have any energy. You got a set of points and a coil and a headlight. And as long as the brake light doesn't kill everything, you're good. <laughs> that's all that was on the bike. You're not going to be running with a horn and a headlight on all day. No. So, so you really, in the real world, you don't really need that much. You can also either go 6 volt or 12 volt. There's absolutely no advantage to going to 6 volt. None. And this is a 6 volt generator? These are 6 volt. If you want to go to 12 volt, you have to change out your headlight. Your tail light bulbs, your well, dash I'm going to do that all of that and your, anyways. And your ignition coil. So, six volt. There's no reason to. You still get bright headlight bulbs with six volt. They even make a damn LED six volt bulb. I found. I know you were saying. I was shocked they made one. They make one. So I like six volts. They work good. No yeah, but we're in for a bunch on this. But uh, you know, you, you make a decision on how much stuff you're going to change. Like I said, this can be rebuilt and fixed, or you can go something else. And well, we'll we'll mock up that other one. Frankly, most of the time, I probably have all the parts to rebuild it in stock here. But yeah, but what? Couple but nights, they're... couple whole days doing it. Oh yeah, there. The biggest problem on these is getting these field coils back in, and you you, know, you break off lots of these bits tightening these screws yeah. up. Yeah. Oh, of course. Because you have to pull these in tight. Yeah. And, uh, they, and you have to kind of almost like heat form them. Yeah. See, now I got a heat source, and I can heat the things up with a in the oven and keep tightening on it, these things kind of reform. In the old days, I didn't have that, so you just had to do it force. Do you have any of these on the shelf? No. The no, you rebuild them. So I haven't worked on these in 30 years, so. All right, well this thing's ready to come out, so this comes out just by basically putting in the press and pressing on, or just dropping on the floor a couple of times. Let me go over here and drop it on the floor a couple of times. Did you see that? Yes, popped it right out. There you go. That was the official uh, Harley Davidson removal. Oh, well, I'm sure. Okay, now. We'll physically, see. I don't see anything really damaged with it. <laughs> all, all the windings look good. These are all good. This is good. It does smell like burnt wire, though. It sure does. It smells like the inside of a submarine. Is that what they smell like? Yeah, pretty much. So anyway, that's what they are. See how that plate I told you in there had the seal in it? Yeah, it's got yeah. The, it's riveted together. So it has a piece of felt in there. And once the felt is worn out, there's no seal in it. But when you put a new bearing in here that's a sealed bearing, you will knock 90% of the oil that goes through here into there out. So I can see for time and labor and parts on this, it's going to be prohibitive. Uh, just like anything else on a bike, you fix it. Well, whatever you want to do. Nothing's prohibitive, but... But everything needs to be worked on. 
Yeah, this is all bad, so. All right, well, I'm glad we... All right, we so we'll make some decisions on what we're going to do. And then uh, it just comes down, you know, restoration. You actually rebuild all this stuff for a rider. It's not that important. So. Well, mine's going to be more of a rider. Yeah, you're trying to make a rider. Right. So. I'm not going after... Uh, yeah, let me go grab that other gear real quick. I'll show you. All right. It's a pretty motor there, customer motor. Very oh, nice. Late model crap over there. What's that? You're looking at late model crap. Oh, over there. just I know the viewers are gonna wanna know. Okay, this is made by these people. And that would go for panhead or whatever, huh? That fits over there. You do have to do some modifications on these things a little bit to make them fit. The newer ones, they make them smaller diameter, so they will fit in your application, whereas the old days, they, they, you have to turn them down. And this one's still sealed. You also still not use a sealed bearing. Yeah. I don't know why not. But. Okay, let's see. So there's your overall. Oh, that's a pretty nice unit. Now. Here's the key part right here. Now that's not even in all the way, and you can already yeah. see there's a large difference. Right, right, right. This is just cooling fins on here, though. That's a regulator. This actually is a regulator. Okay. So all you gotta do is hook up your battery to here, and your light. To hear your idiot light change generator made in not. made in USA. Yeah, yeah. You want the idiot light on the dash to work? That goes here. This goes to the battery. You're done. You don't have to use any other no other electrical. I like it. And you can use a. Um, they have a. You could put that same style gear on the same shaft. Right. The same spline. Hmm. Harley didn't change hardly anything over the years. Okay. One good thing about Harley. This is a low output version, which means it works with a little small little battery. Okay. Good. This is a 12 volt generator, not a 6 so, so, but they do make a 6. So, well, like I said, they, obviously they look a little different than these. On my bike, I was probably going to go to one of these, but I was going to try to huh. put that on there. It'd be easy. You could slot it and slip it right on there. Yeah. Bring it all the way down to that rib. Yeah, well, it's, I would probably go in here and grind this away a little bit here so it would fit in here a little bit better. Yeah. But yeah, I would try to get that in there as far as I could. You can at least go in there that far. So you're going to go this way on yours? I would probably do something like that, which would be kind of hide the fact what's in there. I think I'd like that to go that route. Yeah. Well, these are nice, but on my military bike, there's one of these on there. It's been on there for 35 years. Well, it still works just fine. Except this has um, been, yeah. When you, when I saw that wire broken off of that when field. Are, when things are built correctly, they will live a long time. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's I absolutely you. nothing wrong with this generator. Well, I'm sure not. But if you want to put brighter lights on the bike and, you know, stereo and. Oh, I'm not interested in all and, that. You know, a bunch of running lights and all this crap like that, then you need to get a little more juice. All right. But, well, that saved me a so, lot. You've got to figure out what you want to do on the old bike. Yeah, all right. There's nothing wrong with these old ones. That just, well, they need work. That's a much better way to go. So, you know, they, they definitely do look a little different. But when it comes time to rebuild these, these are super simple to rebuild, so. It's not All right, well, I wouldn't have any problem. But, All right. But anyway, there's your difference on that. So, so there you go. Okay. All right, we're good right. now. Thanks.